basswood tree is a subject we've been talking about already in some of our videos. It's uh, all over southern Ontario. And the wood of it is not known very well compared to other woods out there, compared to the ash, the maple, and the walnut, and the oak. It's not very well known. However, in Canada and across the states, basswood is sought after by wood carvers all over, especially here in eastern Ontario, where it's grow where it flourishes really. This is all over. Right behind me, all over there, all across this lake area. Wherever you find waterways, you often find the basswood tree growing nearby because they do very similar things to the willow and the poplar. They'll sucker. Branch breaks off, it sticks in the mud, and it can actually start to grow. So this wood you can find almost anywhere in the Ontario region and Quebec region. The wood is extremely light and it's a nice light color. Here you can see a brown color happening and that's because the bark hasn't been peeled off it properly. But if I actually take my knife peel away you can actually see a nice light color to it. And the wood as you can see is easily carved if I stand up right now, I'll just do a simple chest lever side cut. I can almost cut right through the wood. And with a forward cut, if I lock my wrist enough, it carves very well. And if I do more of a Swedish Scandinavian carve, it leaves almost no need to sand comes out very smooth. Peel the bark off it. And this wood is fantastic for woodworking and it's really good for certain projects such as making mugs, plates, bowls, and of course spoons. The great reason for using basswood for spoon making is the same reason why people use poplar and they use birch. There's very little taste to it. It's a light wood, it's easily carved, but there's no taste to it unlike pine or spruce and of course walnut you'll get certain taste coming from that wood not so with, uh, with basswood and of course you got those fibers that we talked about in the previous video those fibers can actually be made into lanyards on your spoon so you can actually hang your spoon very easily you get almost everything from the wood from that one tree from the basswood of course, a lot of people out there that do bow drill and fire by friction, they'll speak very proudly about their basswood spindles. Why? It's one of the best woods out there for bow drill spindles and uh, baseboards and everything else for the, uh, for the bow drill fire. Reason being, it's just as light and it's just as simple to work with as cedar. However, unlike cedar, it doesn't have a resin in it. With less resin means more friction. And that means the fire is easier to get. And of course, since it's hardwood, that little coal that you make it'll burn very very hot. Now when I'm building wigwams and I'm building art shelters and everything else I often look for very flexible wood and this is a fairly flexible wood for it. And for spring projects and summer projects this is often what I, saw, uh, what I seek for. In fact whenever I'm making wigwams for schools and everybody else I work with for any programs this is the first tree I go for. Namely because if I cut it down it grows right back up. As you can see the basswood tree behind me it's very small, but the reason it's so small is the beavers cut it down in the spring. It's already growing back. I don't have to worry about cutting it down. It's self-sustainable in that way. As long as I don't completely obliterate the tree, it can grow back. However, for winter projects, this is not what I would be using. For all year round shelters, I would not trust this wood. Namely, this wood is very, is very easy to break. And if you look at it, you compare that to any ash that you break there's very little fiber coming off it, there's not long strands coming out of it when it breaks it's almost a clean 90 degree break, in fact if I pop it that way it's done, and even in these thick areas it's an almost 90 degree snap break it again the reason for that is it's not a very strong wood the fibers rely on the bark, which is why the bark of this tree is so strong. It's namely because it's such a fast growing tree, it doesn't have time to get that strong inner core. Same reason with willow and poplar. Why they have really strong fibers for making rope is the wood 
is not very strong itself. That being said, you would not want to use this in a shelter that has to hold up a lot of snow or hold up a lot of debris. This is one of your better shelter covers, uh, shelter weaving materials for summer, uh, summer and spring and early fall shelters when you're just going to be putting a thatch on top of it or putting on a couple of blankets or a couple of tarps. This is not what you're going to want for cold weather. For cold weather and when I'm dealing with snow up here in Canada, remember the snow gets up to six feet deep or more sometimes. Because of that, you're going to be having several tons of snow often on your shelter. And that doesn't sound like a big deal. If you're thinking about it, you think I'm exaggerating. Believe me, I'm not exaggerating on that. You get several tons of snow on top of your shelter. If you want your shelter being able to break that easy, if you want to be able to snap with no effort, no, you want to have an extremely strong frame. So because of that, I would suggest ash, maple, oak, things like that, not basswood. Tamarack even. Even a tamarack would be very strong compared to basswood. However, this wood is easy to shape, easy to carve, it leaves no taste, it burns readily. So this wood is a really, really efficient wood. It's a really good wood, and in situations that such as summertime when you're going to often find these trees in the summer, because they're, they're easier to identify from their, uh, from their leaves than they are from their bark. So if you find them, use them. And they're going to be useful for no matter what you're looking at. However, every tree has its weak, uh, weak points, and that's its weak point right there. It just breaks too simply. However, even at those broken pieces, I can still make use of this. And of course, we've got all this bark fiber on it, which I can go out and ret right now out in the water. I can get some pretty good string, uh, string off it. So although it breaks readily, basswood is one of your best friends out there in the woods. And this is video two in the basswood series. My name is Caleb Musgrave from Canadian Bushcraft. Thank you for watching.